Hi guys, it's Casey. Thank you for clicking on my video. Um, it is Mental Health Awareness Month this month and I have wanted to talk about this um, in publicly over social media for a while now. Um, the time never really seemed right. I have wanted to talk about this when I was 12, when I was 13, when I was 14, 15, 16. Now I'm 21 and I think I can get my story out there. Um, this is not my whole story. This is not everything I have dealt with throughout my mental illness and my issues, but I wanted to get my story out there. So I know a lot of people hear about depression, they hear about anxiety. A lot of people obviously struggle with that. I am one of them, but I have probably heard about psychosis a handful of times before it actually happened to me so I wanted to share my story and hopefully if it just makes one person feel less alone feel you know understood and anything of that nature then I'll be happy um so <laughs> I'm like a little jumbled for words right now and I'm kind of nervous and I told myself like when I make this video I'm going to like do my hair and makeup, get notes out so I'm not jumbled up but you know what, raw and uncut, that's how we're doing it. So if you don't know what psychosis is, I wrote down the definition to give you a understanding. Psychosis is a severe mental disorder in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. So, in October of 2017, I had psychosis. I had psychosis for about 10 days. Um, I, I guess I should, like, backtrack... A little more maybe um so I was diagnosed psychotic I had like a drug induced psychosis and it was because of marijuana um they said that it wasn't just the one blunt I smoked before going um to where I was going but they said sorry um, so it wasn't just like the one blunt or the one, you know, hit of THC that got me into the psychosis, but it was actually the fact that since, um, a pretty young age, I mean, I started smoking marijuana when I was probably 13 or 14 maybe is when I first started trying it. And then ever since I was probably 14, 15, um, until this happened in 2017, I smoked on a regular basis. And yes, I will admit it's fun. You know, sometimes I miss it and everyone and their brother smokes weed. And so it's kind of like, um, it's, it's just kind of hard to be like, no, don't smoke weed. And I'm not saying don't smoke weed, but I'm just saying that that is what they said induced my psychosis. And where I was getting at before is it's not just because of that one last hit I took. It's because since I was young and for a long time, I smoked weed on a daily and it pretty much, um, my brain became like immune to it or whatever. This is just kind of what they told me. And then they said, um... It was sort of like I was allergic to weed now. Um, so I don't have anything against weed. And I sometimes question, you know, like, was it the weed? Like, why why did that one blunt I smoked kind of, like, put me into this whole state of mind? And, and I, you know, I was psychotic. I was crazy. But so, and also, an, like, another thing at the time, I actually had a UTI. So that also can cause you to go like a little nuts, but they said um, that I'm, that was my only UTI I've ever had. So I really don't know, but I've heard that UTIs can like affect you mentally 
as well as obviously physically. But um, I also was going through a kind of a rough patch at that time. Um, yeah, I was a little bit lost. Um, so yeah, actually, this was my fourth time being in a mental hospital. And it kind of turned into a fifth because I left for a little bit and I went back again um, about a week later, which I'll explain. But um, it's really taking a lot out of me to share this right now. And hopefully I have the courage to post this video. But I just kind of wanted to explain what was going on in my mind versus what everyone else was seeing. Um, one of the easiest ways for me to kind of explain it, because I feel like, or maybe I'm just wrong, like maybe people do, a lot of people do know more about psychosis than I really did, but I always like when I explained it to someone else, it was almost like I was schizophrenic and it honestly like takes a lot for me to say that because there's such a stigma around every all these different things but really it's like all these different things can happen to anyone and like I don't know I, I hope I didn't like create an issue when I with what I just said but like it is like it is crazy like growing up like you know you hear about like depression and anxiety and all of that but you never like think about like, you're just living your normal life and you know you don't have schizophrenia and then you go through, like, you, you do, you, you, like, you know, it come, it comes up later in your life and it's kind of crazy to think that. So, psychosis is, um, kind of like how I explained it, um, it's pretty much like an escape from reality, so I guess I'm just going to show... I feel like I keep backtracking and saying the same things. I hope you guys don't mind. But so pretty much I went to work and I was extremely happy. I just felt so happy and I'm already like, a, I don't know, I'm like a spiritual person with like the universe and the moon and my crystals and all of that. So I was just like feeling so happy and like so enlightened and I was just so joyful at work. Like I, I literally was almost crying because I was just felt so happy. And so I went along my day at work and then it's crazy because like looking back now in like a straight, not psychotic mindset, like looking back, I'm like, okay, like I was being, you know, weird and like that wasn't exactly me. But in the time it it's just how your mind's acting like you really just it's like everything's everything's normal like you just think that these thoughts and these conversations are just happening because it is but in reality I that was kind of my star is was in October of 2017 I was at work and I just felt like I was I started feeling like it's so, it's so weird to talk about it, um, to, like, my camera and not, like, a friend, but I do want to get this out there and I do want to share it. So, I pretty much felt like every one of my coworkers, like, I, I was talking to them and I felt like I was helping them, like, open up their minds. Um, I felt like, I thought I was, like... A gifted if you look into this more like this is like common people think they're like a god or um you know you hear things you see things that's what happens that's what I went through but I pretty much I didn't think I was god but I thought I was like a gifted person from like the Pleiadian star seeds which um so I don't know. I went on with work. I thought I was like helping all of my coworkers. Um, I was having fun, but like later did I find out that like my coworkers, like I said some really weird shit. Um, 
one of my coworkers, which this is like not like me and I would never ever say this, but I just want to really like be raw and put it out there. Like one of my coworkers told me that I was down in the cooler getting uh, like a cake out and that I looked up to him and I asked him if he wanted me to give him a blowjob while I was down there. I just don't, and this is another thing, like, first of all, I would obviously never, ever say that in my life, but, like, I also, like, this whole thing is kind of blurry to me, like, I remember some parts, I don't remember other parts, I just remember, like, what I was seeing, I don't remember how I was feeling, I remember what I heard, like, I don't remember what I said, it's just, um, you know, that's, like, another thing is, is you don't remember all of it, um, like, I'm, obviously, I'm out of psychosis now, um, it's 2020, May 22nd, 2020, and this is in October of 2017, but it's still on my mind every day, <laughs> um, anyways, after work, I just felt happy, it felt normal, like, what I was thinking and what I was saying to people, like, they could tell that something was up with me, but I couldn't tell that something was up with me. So, then I was talking to this guy um, for a couple months then, and I was going to his house that night. And so, I drove from my work to his house, which was about 45 minutes. I couldn't tell you anything about the drive, but I made it there safe and sound and... I mean, I was, I, like, was okay to drive. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I was. So, I got to his house. Um, all I really remember is I was meeting his, like, best friends for the first time. And we were in the hot tub together. And I didn't really have time to talk to him before his friends were there. So, I don't think he really realized that something was up with me, even though I thought everything was fine. So we were in the hot tub and he was trying to play, um, like a, he was trying to pick a song to play. And I remember like, then this is when, like, I, I believe I was like reading minds and that I could hear their thoughts. And so he, I just, See, it's, like, very wishy-washy, but I just remember he was playing a song. He wanted to play a song, and I said to him, like, yeah, play play that song. And because I knew it was, like, one of his favorite songs, I was like, play that song. He's like, what song? I'm like, that one. And he picked the song that I was thinking about him playing, and I was like, okay, like, this is, you know, this is real. And it's so weird because... I don't know, he was, uh, I'm, I don't like to say anyone was not, is not a great person, but, like, I honestly was not around him enough and knew him enough to know if he was fucking with me or if I was just hearing things and seeing things and thinking things happen, but I just remember his two friends were on the other side of the hot tub and... I can't remember, I honestly, it's hard, I don't know what I was talking about, but guys, I kid you not, when I thought I was opening their minds, and so I felt like I knew when one of his friends, like, minds, like, popped, opened up, and then it's like, me, the guy I was with, and his friend were, like, waiting for the other one, I know this sounds crazy, I know I sound crazy, but... It's, this is what happened, and um, I swear, like, we we're all waiting for the last one to, like, open his mind, and then it, like, happened, and right when I knew that he opened his mind, the, I'm just gonna give him a ra random name, Johnny, Johnny said to me, do you know what you just did? Like, right after that happened, and I, like, knew, I was like, yeah, like, I opened their minds up, and then he was like, he said, do you know what you just said? And I said, what? And he goes, you opened up their minds. And I 
freaked out because I was like, heck yes, like I knew I did. And I knew this was all like happening and real. I freaking jumped out of the hot tub onto the grass and started jumping up and down because I was so happy. And next thing I know, I remember him grab, hopping out of the hot tub, putting a towel on me, on me and bringing me inside and like telling me that I was crazy. I remember his friends coming in and he was, I just remember feeling, I think he was, he was like yelling at me and I was telling his friends like, please don't go, please don't go. He's being mean to me. I don't want to be here when he's being mean to me. And they ended up leaving. Then I just remember, um, like being like in his bed lay next to each other and I just remember going back and forth like think like talking to him with my mind and reading his his mind and I remember like re like talking back and forth telepathically and him being like I just remember him being like stop like this isn't real this isn't real and I was like what's not real and he goes he's like you know what's not real and I'm like sitting there but I'm like sitting there telepathically like talking to him and I'm like he just doesn't want it to be real but like this is what's happening and I remember him being like stop doing that and I was like I'm like doing what and he goes you know what you're doing and I'm just like okay so I so yeah anyways that night I remember I didn't even know he was videotaping me until weeks after he said he was videotaping me and I wanted to see it and he said no and I was like I begged him to see it for me to see it and he showed me it and the second I started talking I said no I don't want to see that that's not me and it's really funny not funny but I was watching another person sharing their story with psychosis and she kind of said the same thing her mom videotaped her and then a few weeks later when she was out of psychosis she asked to see the video and the second that she started talking in the video she said no I can't watch that and it's crazy because that's exactly what happened with me um Johnny at the time said that like in the video I was like up and down sitting up standing up like sitting on the ground be like you know just like acting wild um and I just remember watching conspiracy theories and I thought like him showing it was like on YouTube like 10 conspiracy theories I rem like I remember it being like about like unicorn maybe like a unicorn and then like like aliens and something and I just like thought to myself like you know this is all reality like he's showing me this video because you know it really is true and like all of this thing all of these things I'm thinking about like is all true I think someone's outside my house but I don't really know so that night he's like I'm calling your mom you're acting weird I I remember telling him it's 2 30 in the morning do not wake them up like let's just go to bed you don't need to call my parents at 2 30 in the morning to tell them this blah, blah blah I don't remember sleeping I don't really remember waking up next thing I know I just remember we were fighting in the morning and I don't know what he said or what happened, but next thing I know, I decided to get naked and go in the hot tub because he was stressing me out and I wanted to be, like, naked out in the fucking field hoping, like, it would make me feel better. <sighs> Is this getting, like, so out of hand and I don't need to, like, keep sharing? I don't know. I feel I think I do need to keep sharing. I, this is just me sharing okay I just don't want people to think I'm like you know what I actually think what you want because I know who I am and I know what I am and I know my worth so um yeah so next thing I know he comes out the door and he says I called your parents and the cops are coming and the ambulance is coming I don't, I'm pretty sure I heard that and I just stayed in the hot tub naked and then the ambulance and the cop showed up and he came out the door of this house and I stood up and I was like, I literally am pretty sure I was standing up like fully naked 
in front of them and I was like, well, can you at least like give me some clothes? So he came and gave me clothes and then um, I just remember talking to the cops like I just remember telling them like, you don't have to be here. There's no problems here. And like, there's no, I don't know why he called the cops. And I just remember them being like, oh no, you have, you have to come with us in the ambience. You have to come with us. Um, and I remember kind of like questioning their authority a little bit. Like I remember just saying like, what makes the difference that you have the uniform on than when you don't? Like we're all human beings here, like, and we're all people. So, so why? I just remember like testing them. Um, but it's like I said, it's really wishy washy. And then I remember getting in the back of the ambulance. I correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure every time you're in the back of the ambulance, you have to be laying down in a bed like laying down in a bed like I don't know if you have to have the things on you or whatever but I thought like if you're getting escorted in an ambulance that like, you have to be in the stretcher I don't know May I maybe I'm wrong but I just remember um like literally singing like country songs with the EMTs and stuff like sitting there normally not laying down or anything um I just remember like singing songs with them. That's like pretty much all I remember besides them telling me, no, we like, we have to, we have to, um, we're bringing you to someone. Like you really need to see this person. And I was like, really, really? Like, cause I thought that I was being brought to like someone that was like me, like, like, not like God, but like, I guess like, like a godly figure, like someone who I could like team up with to like open everyone's minds to like pretty much like the beauty and like energy and love. And um, I remember getting in there. Then I don't, oh, actually, yeah, I do. I don't know when my mom showed up. Like, like the times are really all messed up, but I just remember after I knew I was like going into the hospital, I was like fighting. Like I did not want to go in. I did not want to go in and they were pretty much like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe at the time I thought the ambulance wasn't bringing me to the hospital. They were bringing me like, like everyone, like the ambulance was on in, in on the mission. Like they were bringing me to like, I don't know, like a freaking castle or like something like awesome. So I can meet like this person. Um, then I, the next thing I remember, I am being like cuffed into my bed and I didn't want any medicine in me. I didn't want to be like, like fucked with. And I just remember the nurse, um, putting an IV in me because they thought I was on like acid or something. And she, I just remember my mom was there, but it was blurry. I don't even really remember her being there, but she put the IV in my arm and I just remember screaming you fucking bitch like I was so mad that she was doing anything with, with my body because I was like very like this is my body I do what I want with my body you can't touch my body because like in reality like those are pretty like those should those are like your rights like I mean, I understand, like, if you're fucking running from the cops because you just, like, committed a crime and they're obviously gonna, like, take you down and cuff you up. But, like, I just felt like I was being taken, like, advantage of by them putting the UV in my arm. Next thing I remember, I'm waiting for bed up in the room, up in the hallway, and I'm with my mom, and I met some friends, and, um... I remember talking about, I remember, like, thinking about all these things, like, my aura and, like, all those types of things, and then it seems like everyone I talked to brought that up to me, and it was kind of, like, them reaffirming, like, my thoughts and the fact that, like, I don't know, like, collective consciousness type of thing, um, I just remember, like, talking to these few people also waiting to, like, go into a bed and they were like, 
we were just talking about auras and I just remember like saying like what do you think my aura is and I just remember the, the kid going a rainbow definitely a rainbow and I was like I don't know I just remember that um god I'm 25 minutes and I don't think I need to keep long making everything longer like should I stop now oh who cares 25 minutes if you're still watching I love you if you're interested I love you um so then yeah I was submitted into the hospital obviously um the like mental health floor and I was there for 10 days um for five days I would not take any medicine I the day I got there I stopped taking the medicine I was already on for like my depression my birth control I decided I was like nope yeah like I was like yeah like I was taking that but nope I'm not taking that anymore and because I just wanted to be like all natural and just be like as tuned into like energy as I could be um um so yeah, I remember walking up and actually like one of my friends worked on that unit and I'm pretty sure I immediately kind of recognized her. And then I had like another friend that I didn't recognize until probably the second or the third day when I looked at her and I just like said her name and I was like, I'm, I'm just gonna throw like a random name out there. I was like, Ashley? And she's like, yeah Casey and I'm like and I was just like oh my god I just recognized it was you and at that point too it kind of like hit I was kind of like thinking to myself like why did how did I just realize that was her like I've I've been here for almost three days and I just like realized it was her um I don't think I need to keep going on do I need to go on a specific detail you guys aren't really gonna answer right now but maybe I should try to just like give you some like key points um so my name is Casey Jones I then started to think I met this guy in there who is a big Grateful Dead fan um and we talked a lot and it kind of got me like into like the hippie like I was just thinking like I'm like fucking reincarnated from fucking Woodstock or something and I thought like I just remember my dad always tell me um, or no, I think he told me, um, when I was on the phone with him for like the first time or whatever, he said, like, you, I named you Casey Jones for a reason. And that kind of stuck with me because I'm like, thought like, like I said, like he, it's kind of like you have, you see things on the TV, you hear things from people and it's like them are like reaffirming what you're thinking or like I'm like watching something on TV um like we had TV in like the common room and it was like they the TV was talking like directly to me um I just pretty much felt like I was getting um okay I'm sorry but like I need to hit this because I'm like sort of like anxious still talking about this and it's 28 minutes so I really don't think anyone will watch the whole video So I think I'm just going to tell you some key, not key, but like bigger things in my um, stay at the hospital, which looking back at now, I can say like, okay, I was definitely in like a not the state of mind that I like am currently in. Obviously, like I was psychotic. Um, I remember when I first like got in there and I think it was like breakfast time the next day. Um, when I got my food, they gave me like, they didn't give me what I ordered and I freaked out and like, I remember they had oatmeal and I thought they were poisoning me and trying to kill me. Um, so I, so I thought they were trying to kill me. So I remember literally like screaming at the top of my lungs, going up to the counter, like asking that, like telling them, like, I know you're trying to kill me, blah, blah, blah. Um, um, 
yeah and um I remember like another time I got so I got in two fights I'm not a fighter like ever I'm previous to this hospital visit I had never gotten in a physical fight afterwards of this hospital visit I have still not gotten in a physical fight I'm not one to fight or start like trouble or I'm just not like a like a violence or negativity really type of person um but yeah I remember I was also in um I, I, a lot of people on my unit suffered from a lot of mental illness um there was a, a lot of uh, like several people with like schizophrenia um um BPD like a bunch of different things a couple of them just had um just were like had depression and stuff but yeah I just remember this one time um we were in like a group study and this girl we were it was some, not like a group study but it's kind of like a workshop type of thing we all have to go to and we were talking about like positive coping like mechanisms or something like that and I just remember this girl said something um and I was agreeing with her and I was like yes girl like trying to be positive and like uplifting and I just remember she turned to me and, and was like see like I don't even know if this is what actually happened because I knew I was so disoriented but she turned to me and was like girl you're calling me a girl I'm a I'm a grown-ass woman I do my laundry I do my kids laundry but and I'm just saying and I just don't even like really remember what I said but next thing I know she's beating me up and she broke my glass I pretty much like huddled down like I wasn't trying to fight I was literally encouraging her for what she was saying she literally broke my glasses um yeah um and I swear to god like I did not start that fight and she literally, so she literally started this fight. I'm like on the ground crying. And then she gets to stay in the room. And then they send me out of my room into my room all the way down the hallway. And I was literally like, and then I just remember next thing I know the doctors are coming in. And they, I can't remember, not not tranquilize you you're not tranquilizing a person what is it called I can't but you get what I'm saying they they poked me and they what's it called oh, it's just at the tip of my tongue sedate they sedated me um and I just remember they like so when they first came in and were like Casey we like we have to sedate you or whatever the fuck they said I was like no you don't like I'm completely calm right now why do you have to do this to me like you really don't have to do this and I just remember being like no we have to do this we have to do this and I just thought that like I still like to this day don't know why I got sedated twice in the hospital to be completely honest like I really I really don't because in my mind like both times I was fighting them like once they tried to like put medicine in me I, well I also like felt like they were like kind of like intimidated by me and they knew what I was doing by like opening people's minds or whatever and I just remember like so many people in fighting me and I just remember like screaming at the top of my lungs I literally felt like my energy was like coming off my body to like and I swear to god I, there was at least five people holding me down so they could sedate me and then like I just like they're like I don't want to do this but we have to do this no we I'm like no you don't have to do this and I just remember them be like no we have to do this I'm sorry like I really don't want to and I'm like then why are you have to do it like and it seems like both times I was sedated, I just remember, like, almost, like, crying to them before they did it. And I was just like, no, like, you don't have to do this. Please don't do this. Um, yeah, so that was one of the times I got sedated. And the other time I got sedated was, it's, like, funny because it's not, like, funny, but, like, in my regular state of mind, like, who I am right now blah 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 like I'm very like I don't know you know I'm I'm in tune I like I'm like spiritual 
like I believe in like positive energy and you know just like good vibes I don't know how to explain it so like even not in a psychosis state of mind, I will, like, go into a river naked. I mean, I, like, I'm just, like, a free spirit. I don't know, like, some of you think that's crazy, but really, I think that, um, you just need to, like, chill out a little bit sometimes, but, so, anyways, what I was getting at is, I don't know what, I think, like, I, this was another time I was in a different room which was a single room so I was in a room all by myself so that I wasn't with other people probably like you know fucking damaging them or something and because I just felt like I was the bad guy like they everyone was making made me seem like I was they like in my head I felt like all of the workers and stuff like thought I was a bad guy and they needed to stop me from you know being being like spiritual and like uplifting and like free and like opening people's minds so I don't know but I remember I was in my single bed room and I I think this is after my second fight which wasn't really a fight but it was like kind of it was this I don't remember what it was about I this but this girl, um, a lot bigger than me, just, like, fucking sacked me in the face. I don't know how I pissed her off. I really can't remember what happened. But, like, in no way, like, no, no time out of, the, like, the whole thing was I, like, ever remember being in this state of mind, like, oh, I'm gonna be mean to this person. I'll be mean. That's just, like, not who I am. So, I, and even in that, in my state of mind of psychosis, it just, like, I don't think I was, like, intentionally at all, like, trying to be mean to people, but for some reason, I just kept getting, like, hurt on myself, like, I was hated, but, um, anyways, after that, I think, I think this is after she punched me, they sent me into my room to be alone, next thing you know, I'm naked again, standing in my tall window, looking out, butt naked out the window, standing on the ledge, looking out the window, trying to be one with nature. And then next thing I know, someone knocks on my door and they're like, Casey, what are you doing or whatever? They see me doing that and they're like, I, I honestly can't remember if they put clothes on me. They told me to get clothes, put clothes on or what. But they um, sedated me again after I was naked in my window. And it really, like, hurt me because I felt like I was trying to, like, spread the, like, love and, like, positivity and for people to just, like, feel nature and, like, I kept repeating one is all and all is one, um, which I do, like, still believe that, like, we are all one. Um, but I just remember repeating that. I think that's what I was repeating in the window, actually. Now that that comes to me, um, came to me. Um, so yeah, I was sedated again. I remember if I was another fight after, it was a, not like a fight, but it was another one of me like crying, begging them not to like, no, I don't want to be sedated. Like I'll put my clothes on and I'll chill, but like, you really don't have to sedate me. You just like leave my room and let me be. But no, they had to sedate me. So then when they all started getting to me, they literally like forced me down, cuffed me up on my legs and my arms in the bed, sedated me and left me there to freaking like pass out or whatever. And I just remember too, like the one girl that I recognized that, you know, like I know of, like we're not necessarily like friends, but we're like night, like we're acquainted, we're good acquaintances, like, we're both friendly people, and, like, I like her, and I believe she likes me, like, it was really sad, because she was actually the one who had to, like, sit at my door in a chair and just watch me, and I just remember, like, talking to her about it, and I don't, I don't know, I just remember her saying, like, I don't know why they had to do that, and, like, I don't know, I think she was maybe trying to comfort me, but I don't know, um, let me try to think of something else. 
um I just remember when I went to see the psychiatrist there I feel like I'm like sweating I'm like not looking pretty at all I'm 40 minutes into talking about this um but I just remember the psychiatrist being like um oh this is another thing I remember I think it was my psychiatrist or whoever they would ask me like what's my name and I would be like well my birth name is Casey but you can call me whatever you'd like and then they would say like where are you from or where do you live and I had said like I live everywhere like I I'm everywhere I live everywhere like I live everywhere I go I'm alive here I'm alive there I remember them I think like um when were you born and I'm like well, in this life, I was born on November 6th, but I've been alive for much longer. Like, um, that I just remember the psychiatrist telling me that they will take me to court if I don't take my medicine. And I was like, I'm not taking that medicine. Like, you guys just are trying to poison me and I'm trying to, like, help other people. Um, and... Uh, I just remember being like her saying it felt like she was like talking down on me and I just remember she was like kind of like making me mad the way she was talking to me and I just remember this one thing that I said to her I'm like like we are both humans here like we are both adults let's talk to people like each other like you know we're humans and not like some crazy human being even though I was going through psychosis I just remember her saying I am not your friend, or you are not my friend, you are my patient, and that just stuck with me, because I'm, like, it pisses me off, like, patient, like, I'm a patient, but, like, no, I'm a human being, I'm a person, I'm an individual, I am, like, just, like, made me so mad that she said patient, that still sticks with me to the day, and I still think about, I always still think about, like, what if I never took my medication, um, to help me feel better, to help me get rid of my psychosis, but really what made me take my medicine is my mom. She, I just remember being in the room with her while she was visiting and my stepdad and she just was like begging me like, Casey, please take the medicine. And yeah, I think on the fifth night, I've, or the sixth, I took the medicine. Um, and yeah, I still think back, um, and I just think what would have happened if I didn't take the medicine, but at the same time, I'm, like, and I also am, like, well, what, can they really take you to court over that? Like, I mean, if someone's, like, depressed, you can't take them that to, like, to court over them not taking like a Prozac or medication to help aid them in being like less depressed but now that I think about it more I'm like well like maybe they could because I was like not like like the definition says like I was not in touch with reality so I could like you know I could harm others or myself so maybe they could have but I mean they probably could have or maybe I was just hearing things, but yeah, um, I remember having my hands out to these plants on the, um, roof of the hospital, because, like, we were on a floor, we had, like, a roof we could go out and play basketball and stuff with, and I just remember being inside, using my hands, and I could, like, and I was, like, like, feeling, like, the wind, and I was, like, m with my hands and my mind, like, moving the plants, on the um, balcony thing um I remember watching the tv and it was the news and in my head too I was thinking about how just like the news media um I don't want to come on here and like bash like the government and stuff but like I was just saying how like it's all so like and like I was like so corrupt and I was like watching the news and then I was like trying to like I was just watching it and then I was like glitching and I was like yeah like glitch because you know that you're like saying stuff that's like not real news and like that's not like needs to be heard and then I remember them switching over to like 
good things like helping like water treatment plants and stuff and like recycling and I was like so happy I was like yes they heard me like this is the stuff we need to talk about like spreading the love um that was like another thing um oh I one time so at the time there was this um police officer and he, um he was like guarding the the floors and everything like he was a what's it called? freaking called I sometimes I just like cannot think when I'm trying to explain things what's it called I'm like a bodyguard but like a you know he was roaming the halls making sure everything was fine but I thought he was really cute and then I thought this one worker was like kind of like she was prissy to me or whatever and I just remember one time he's like standing there I don't know if I was making conversation with him or what but I can't like I cannot believe I said this type of stuff so this girl oh I think this is what happened I saw them like talking to each other and I was like oh like this girl like she's probably you know with him or I don't even know and I just remember her walking into another room and then when she came back out I literally said to the cop because I looked at her and I was like she just stuffed her bra and I fucking said to the cop I'm like do you want to know what she just did and he was like what I'm like don't tell anyone but she definitely just stuffed her bra when she went in there like really Casey you're literally one when do do people stuff their bras anymore I don't even know I feel like that was like totally like in fifth grade, like, guys would be like, oh my god, that person's totally stuffing their bra. It's like, who the fuck stuffs their bra? <sighs> okay. Um, so yeah, they actually, so I don't know if I need to keep going on with my story and details about the trip, not the trip, but the experience. Um, but yeah, they put me on a medicine that was from the 60s I can't remember what it's called but I honestly probably still have some because I like don't ever feel comfortable like throwing out pills or whatever I know you should just bring them back to your pharmacy or whatever and they get rid of them but I actually just like always keep them I don't know but I could look for you but um they put me on a medicine that was from like the 60s and 70s and um, it was actually given to like people who went through this because of like acid and stuff like during the like 70s hippie days Woodstock like literally all those all those years which kind of was like rings another bell but so they gave me this medicine and by day 10 I was finally you know back to normal but I was a little bit like I just felt bummed because I felt like I was like I had like a spiritual awakening like a huge enlightening like thing that I was like so like intuitive and like that um I was like a medium and like that I was just like all of these things and then I felt like it was taken away from me because I decided to put a medication back in my body so I just remember I was bummed but anyways the, the medicine I was back with my family after on the 11th day I think um back to normal uh with my family I um yeah so things were good for a couple of days and then I started feeling extremely anxious like internally anxious like like I've been anxious before and I know what anxiety is but this was like like end of the world like non-stop anxiety I could not control it there was nothing to do I literally felt like I was just insane like this is I guys I just don't even know how to put it in words because the anxiety I was feeling was like otherworldly like I could not and I and I know that you know anxiety is and depression are really debilitating sometimes because you know it, it's very hard to deal with those kind of things and go on a daily life that's why you have to you know practice positive coping mechanisms talk to people blah 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 that um off the subject a little bit but anyways so I got like extreme anxiety I tried to deal with it for days I tried going back to college um I just remember literally getting into my college classrooms and having to put my head down and pretend to go to sleep because 
not pretend to go to sleep but like try to go to sleep because that was the only way that I couldn't feel this intense anxiety um I remember it was my birthday um now we're into the beginning of November and it was my birthday party and like my whole family was at my house um I was turning 18 right yeah I think 18 I shouldn't have to like I actually think I was turning 19 yeah I think I was turning 19 um and my whole family was at my house obviously they wanted to see me and be with me and they missed me and they knew everything that just happened like I went through psychosis I was totally not myself my mom like says that that was like the worst experience she's ever had to go through was like seeing me like that um but I just remember everyone's at my house and I was so thankful that like everyone was there and I was so happy and I wanted to be with them so badly and everyone came obviously specifically for me and it was my birthday and I just I I literally don't even think I opened presents. I pretty much said hi to everyone and I just remember telling them, guys, I'm so sorry. Like, thank you so much for coming. Maybe I like blew out the candles or something, but I like literally was like, I need to go to sleep because when I slept was the only time like I didn't feel this anxiety. I remember going to work and then I remember telling my boss like um, I was I work in a restaurant. I was hosting that shift and when I was back and I just remember telling him like I don't think I can do this I have so much anxiety right now like there's no way I can talk to these people and seat them and blah 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 um so yeah then you guys might think I'm crazy but I was super 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 anxious and I was with my one of my best friends Brittany and I she was like I my dad I told my dad like I was super anxious and he was like well my stepmom he was like she has CBD if you want to try CBD and I know you might think that's crazy like Casey you just had like a marijuana induced psychosis why would you do CBD but CBD is cannabinoids are different than THC and even now I do enjoy smoking CBD once in a while because I honestly do like you know the taste of weed and I like the way CBD makes me feel and it helps me with certain things but anyways um so I said to Brittany like you know it's worth a shot like let's just go to my dad's I I'm like shaking in my boots so anxious that I cannot even do anything like oh I remember <laughs> also this is like totally not but like in between the hospital too like I was also really anxious and I don't see my dad like as much as I wish I could or I wish I did and like um I remember me and him we actually took a trip out to like near where Woodstock was and he drove the whole way and we went over this um um it's called like bridge or along the Hudson or something it's this huge bridge that you can walk over bike over whatever and we went and saw that and it was like one of my like favorite memories ever with my dad but it really sucks because I was anxious like and he felt so bad for me I'm like sitting in the in his passenger seat like dad I'm just gonna try to sleep like even though I I so badly wanted to like see my the views and the nature around me I just remember feeling like so anxious um so yeah I went to have the CBD to take the CBD I tried it and then I I could not I was like I think I might have even like hit regular weed I'm I'm not I don't remember I honestly don't but I seriously was shaking I was shaking I was like crying I was sweating I was cold I was hot I was like in my dad's bed at this point because my dad was like Casey like how can I help? Like, something's wrong. I'm literally, a sh like, you know what it's like to have, like, an anxiety attack. I was having an anxiety attack, and it was the, like, one of the worst anxiety attacks I've ever had in my life. I really, I thought I was really dying. And then my dad's like, do you want to, like, 
I'm like, I'm like, I think, I think he probably asked me or I said whatever, either way. I'm like, yeah, I need to go to the hospital. So I went, so I got in the ambulance. I remember freaking the fuck out because this woman was like, no, you cannot have anything to drink. I needed water so bad. I was like, I cannot believe, like, I cannot have water right now. I just remember freaking out in the stretcher, went to the hospital, got to the hospital. There was no beds at... I honestly did not want to go back to, I was at the hospital that I stayed in for 10 days, like a week prior, but I did not want to be there because after being out and being there, I realized like I don't really like their mental health facility because I've previously been in the hospital um, several times, a, a different mental hospital several times before being in that one. And I said, no, I do not want to go to that one. I want to go to the other one that I was at before, that I've been at before. So pretty much they gave me like, a Xanax maybe they gave me something like a Xanax I think it might have been a Xanax I was freaking out um yeah and I remember just going home the next day packing my bag and I went off to the other mental hospital and I was there for 17 or I was there for seven days and they pretty much tried me um like gave me a bunch of not like a bunch of different medicine but they gave me different medicines to like help with the anxiety um I remember they gave me one mm, I don't need to share that story actually <laughs> but yeah so they gave me two different medicines um and yes now I am still on um medication for my mental health I take a couple actually I take a couple different things for my mental health and then I take a third one as needed needed for my anxiety um but so yeah I was there for seven days and then I was finally um you know that that like extreme anxiety never-ending anxiety finally subsided and yeah I came home um so I hope I have um I hope I share this video. I know I just spent 56 minutes and 52 seconds talking to you guys and that would be a pretty big waste of time if I didn't actually post this video. But pretty much the reason I wanted to share my story is just to spread awareness on mental health and the importance of mental health. Um, if I know you personally or if I don't, just know that you can always come to me, talk to me. I'm, I'll am i always be here for literally anyone. I extremely care about other people's feelings and making sure they know their worth because I have been there my whole life. I know what it's like to struggle with mental illness. I know what it's like to want to kill yourself. I know what it's like to self-harm. I know what it's like to be feel alone I know what it's like like I know what it's like to go through psychosis I know what it's like to not to have extreme anxiety like de debilitating dis anxiety um I just I yeah I just wanted to share my story and just know that if you're struggling with mental illness you are not alone there are people that care about you. There are people that love you. And there are people that want you here on this earth, alive, healthy, happy, and well. And there is so many people that you can reach out to. Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Talk to a therapist. Nothing is wrong with talking to a therapist. I've seen a therapist um, at least like once a month pretty consistently since I was about, I think I was 13 when I went into the mental hospital for the first time um, due to self-harm and wanting to kill myself. So nothing is wrong with talking to a therapist. Nothing is wrong with calling a hotline. And nothing is wrong with feeling sad either because without feeling sad, you wouldn't know what the opposite happiness feels like. You know, like it's not wrong to show emotions. It's not wrong to be upset sometimes, but just try your best to not dwell on your sadness and try your best, even though you might not have the motivation, you might not know where to start, because I, trust me, I know, but 
do the little things you can to make yourself happy, whether that's read a book, go for a walk, play with your dog, paint your nails, make some food, listen to music, journal, color, read, I already said read, go for a hike, you know, if if looking at social media makes you feel better, do that. If, you know, watching your favorite television show or lighting an incense or meditating helps you do that, do something every day that makes you happy and makes you feel good. Remember that you are worthy, you are important, you are special, you are meant to be here, and you are meant to be happy. I cannot stress enough how how I cannot stress enough how important mental health is to me and how important it is to me to know that the people in my life are okay and if you don't feel okay whether I know you or not know that you can talk to me it took a lot out of me to share my story and if you guys are still watching an hour and 45 seconds later, thank you so much. I just hope that this gives a better understanding of psychosis and mental mental illnesses. And also, do what you want. There is not exact evidence that backs it up, but marijuana among many other drugs I don't even like to call marijuana a drug and I don't want anyone to come at me with marijuana is not a drug but I'm just saying if you go talk to a doctor or when I'm in a freaking psych ward and they say marijuana is a drug that's what they say so I know marijuana is comes from the earth and it is a plant and I know all that trust me but what I'm saying is marijuana among many other substances that you know, impair, not impair, that alter your mind can lead to psychosis. Drug-induced psychosis are very common, and yeah, so just be careful. If there is no evidence to say that I wouldn't have got psychosis if I didn't use marijuana on a daily but like there's no saying that like that's ex like a hundred percent why I went through psychosis but there is like evidence to back up the fact that people at a starting like at a young age um like are at more of a risk of going through psychosis um I don't want to talk on things I'm not 100% educated on, but I'm just saying, like, I never would have thought that obviously would have happened to me. I know so many people who have smoked, smoked their whole lives. That doesn't mean, you know, just, like, I understand people who smoke weed from their for since they're 14 and now they're 75 and they're still smoking weed and this has never happened to them. I understand that, but it happened to me and I was diagnosed psychotic from an overdose of marijuana uh marijuana induced psychosis and I know I said in the beginning of the video I still don't know if I 100% agree or believe it was marijuana but I just wanted to also share that that yeah all right I'm really gonna stop now I love you guys mental health is so important Take care of yourselves, love yourselves because you are beautiful, amazing, inspiring, worthy, powerful, inside and out. And just let your love and light and happiness shine. <sighs> okay. Bye, guys. Thank you.